hello to everybody in Maidens Primary and to everybody in Mrs Gibson's class. Yes, hello, it's me again. Yes, I know that you've been reading The Great Chocolate Plot. It sounds like you've all been enjoying it, which is wonderful. So thank you very much. I have just been sent a little video with lots of your questions. So uh, I just first of all want to say how impressed I was. I think you've all got a future in TV presenting definitely um so yes so i've got all your questions so thank you very much for for handing those over so i shall start off with first questions came from martin and jacob and they showed me their own books the start of their books so you're going to be doing some stuff on the inside of those books are you going to be filling that out maybe your own great chocolate plot adventure you know um so that looks good so i hope maybe you've maybe you've finished them already and your question was how long did it take to make the book well when i first started writing it i mean books you know, you sometimes you just start off with an idea, and I had this idea of of, of the chock apocalypse, the end of chocolate. So I thought about that for a few months, and then I um then I started scribbling things down on bits of paper, and then I started typing it all out, and you end up with what's called a first draft, a first version of it. And I suppose that took me maybe, you know, maybe a few months, five, six months in total to kind of come up with. And it's a very very rough version of it. But then I was lucky that my publisher got a hold of it and then we started to fiddle with it more and more. Because sometimes when, you know, you're, when you're writing stories, you're not going to get it right straight away. You need to fiddle around with it. So we then spent another two years, two years fiddling around with it until it was published. So from when I had that first idea until it was a book on a bookshelf, it was about three years in total. So, and I think compared to some books, that that's not too bad, you know. That's um, you know, but it's still a long time, isn't it? But it takes a lot of a lot of fiddling. It definitely a lot of fiddling. But great question there, Martin and Jacob. Thank you very much for that. And uh, oh, you ask also, could it make a movie? <gasps> you know what? I would love the Great Chocolate Plot to be a movie. Wouldn't that be great? If you've enjoyed it, then um, I, I hope you would like to see it as well. Now I can't say too much about that, but it has been talked about. Um, so if everybody keeps their fingers crossed, you never know, you never know. It's very, very, very early days, but it is something that is being talked about. So we'll see, we'll see. But I would love to say that, I would love to. Uh, right, yes, and I had a question from Harris in Indiana. Hello there. Um, and you said, how did I come up with the title, The Great Chocker Plot? Well, to be honest, I didn't. When I first wrote my story, for a long time it was called The Chuck Apocalypse. That's how it started off for a long time. That's what I called it. But my publisher was a bit worried that The Chuck Apocalypse might be a bit tricky to say. I mean, maybe you've had some fun saying Chuck Apocalypse. Maybe you've had a little bit of a giggle, Mrs. Gibson, saying the Chuck Apocalypse or the Chuck Apocata or getting it all wrong. Um, because it is a silly word, isn't it? And my publishers were a bit worried that people might get it wrong or spell it wrong. So they are the ones who changed it to the great Chuck plot. Now I do, I do like that, I do like that. But um, but in America, it's called the Chuck Apocalypse. So I managed to keep my original title there. But I do like the, the great Chuck plot. But Chuck Apocalypse is a bit of fun, isn't it? So thank you for that question there, Harris in Indiana. Now next we got a one from Tom. Hello, Tom. Um, how did I come up with the name Garibaldi Chocolati? Well, it is a good name, isn't it? I do like that name. I mean, if you've read, you know, you'd have read my book and you'll see that there's lots of funny words and funny things and I enjoy playing around with words and things. So, I mean, there's, there's, a, free, there's a word called um, the, the glitterati um, or the illuminati, which meaning kind of very fancy, privileged, posh people. The, gl the glitterati. So I thought I'd want something a bit chocolatey. So I fiddled around with it and made it chocolatey. And that's the chocolatey tribe that I mention on Easter Egg Island. Um, but then I want, so I want, so I thought that would be a good surname for this person. And then I thought I wanted something quite fancy and, uh, and elaborate and, and a bit lardy da. And I thought, well, Garibaldi, that's, that's, a, that's a biscuit. You know, it's, it's a, maybe an old-fashioned kind of biscuit. You don't often see them anymore. But I thought, Garibaldi, Chocolati. I thought, well, there you go. There you go. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a fun name. So thanks for that question, Tom. Right, now, Richie, you ask, 
very cheekily, why do I always put Gran's knickers on show? <gasps> I know I did that maybe too often. Poor Gran, she has to put up with so much, doesn't she? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I don't know. I just, you know, sometimes just wanted to embarrass her a little bit, you know, because I do like Gran, but uh, I wanted that little bit of silliness, you know, and I think a lot of people who have read it often comment on Gran's knickers. Poor Gran, always show the knickers off. <laughs> So I hope I didn't embarrass her too much, but yes, I just wanted it to be silly. Um, and I, I think she's a good sport, and she she wouldn't mind in the end. Uh, so, yeah, all right, okay, but good question there, Richie, all right. Now, Darcy, you asked, why does Dad call Bumstubble, you know, Mrs. Bumstubble, what is, why does he call her that when her name's Bumstubble? Um... Well, yes, I mean, I think sometimes we all like to give people nicknames and sometimes if you've got a nickname or a name, you know, people like to play around with it and change it a little bit, you know, and especially if it's somebody maybe who you, who you don't like as well, maybe lives next door, you know, you, you do give them a bit of a, uh, a bit of another name, which isn't always, um, you know, nice. I mean, I think you should always try and give people nice names, but if it is somebody that really annoys you and it, if it isn't a very nice person, then I think sometimes you can get away with it. And I thought, and I just like playing around with words and, you know, Bunstable does sound a bit like Bumstable. And uh, I think it's the kind of thing I would do as well. So, um, so yes, so that's why, just for a bit of fun. Okay, but uh, thank you, Darcy. Right, now, next up, your next question was from Scott. Now, apparently, Scott, you were the person who didn't believe Mrs. Gibson when she told you that um, she'd got postcards and a letter and stuff. You thought that she'd made it up herself. Yes, well, I hope you do believe her now. Unless you think that I am Mrs. Gibson. Maybe this is a mask. Maybe if I pull my mask off, maybe I am Mrs. Gibson. Does Mrs. Gibson sound like this? Does she have a voice like that? Maybe she does. Maybe she does. I don't know. I've never spoken to Mrs. Gibson. Um, but Or maybe I am Mrs. Gibson. Well, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Right, but you also ask, was Mrs. Bumstubble a real person or a neighbour? Oh, got to be so careful here. I could get into a lot of trouble. I mean, sometimes a lot of writers do use people, you know, who they've met in real life to put into their books um, or little bits of characters. Um, and sometimes if somebody isn't very nice to you, maybe you could put them into a book and then be not very nice to them in the book. Um, I, do, I, do, I don't want to get in too much trouble here, but... Um, let's just say when I was writing that character, I did enjoy it. I did feel as if I was getting a little bit of my own back. So, yeah, so anybody who writes stories, you've always got to be nice to the people who write stories because they could put you into their book and do horrible things to you. Um, so, but uh, you should be nice to people anyway, and I'm sure, I'm sure everybody in your class is. Okay, but yes, that's a good question, though, Scott. So, okay, then. right now, then, Tom, another Tom, was wondering if Mrs. Bunstable was Gary in disguise. Oh, that's right, yes, so you were. Well, that's it, that goes to show that you're thinking about the story, you're thinking about the mysteries there, aren't you? Trying to work things out. I mean, I. I suppose, it, I mean, you know, in another version of the story she could have been, in this one she wasn't. But that's interesting to see how your mind was working, because you were thinking, oh, that's, I mean, have we seen Garibaldi and Mrs. Bumstable in the same room? You know, maybe they could be the same person. You know, maybe you could write your own story where somebody is in disguise. Maybe you could write about maybe another, an author is disguised as Mrs. Gibson. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, I don't, maybe Mrs. Gibson has lots of different disguises, I don't know, I couldn't possibly comment. Okay, but that's a, that's a very good question though, Tom. Right, and then we had some questions from Ollie, Sophie uh, and Lucas, and Sophie asks, why does Dad think the weeds are flowers? Yes, he's a bit silly, isn't he, Dad? Um, I mean, I suppose, um, um, I mean, well, I think that comes from when I was once weeding, and um, I... I don't know the difference between flowers and weeds, and I pulled up a lot of flowers instead of weeds. Um, and I got a bit of a tell not from my wife and daughter, because I pulled up their, their proper plants, their proper flowers, and I just thought they were weeds. 
So I thought, well, wouldn't it be funny if it was the other way around? You know, I don't know the difference. Is that a flower? Is it a weed? It looks like some weeds can look quite pretty. You know, so he was quite chuffed with them. He was watering them and looking after them. So I suppose he's just a little bit like me in that regard. So, uh, yes, a bit silly, isn't it silly? But, uh, yes, so that's, yes. So that was Sophie who asked that one. And Luke has asked, what's your favourite part of the book? Um, oh, there's lots and lots of little parts. I wonder what your favourite part is. But I think I think there's a part when they're up on the roof, when, when Jelly and her family come up on the roof and they enjoy that very, very last bit of chocolate together. It's quite a calm, quite a relaxed scene. But I do like that. I think that's when Jelly realises that there's, there's, you know, that you shouldn't worry too much about things. And, you know, I think just it was quite a nice setting being up on a roof and quite unusual. So I think I think that was that was a scene I wrote very, very early on. Um, but I think that's one of my, my favourites. OK, so thanks for that question then, Lucas. Now, Ollie asks, where did I get the idea of a bunker under the soft play? Oh, that's right. Yes, well... I think I just wanted a place that was familiar. You know, I think lots of us have been in soft plays and played in it either ourselves or we've taken family members, you know, maybe younger children or younger family members or we used, you, you, know, you know, you enjoy playing in these places as well. So I wanted something that was familiar. But so the next time that you are in one of these places, you'd be thinking, oh, I wonder if there's a chocolate bunker under here maybe have a little bit of a tap with your foot and see if it sounds hollow um so i just i just like those kind of ideas that if you were to visit a place like this you would wonder whether there was a load of chocolate underneath maybe maybe have a little sniff next time you're in a, in a soft place center although it's been a while since i've been in a soft place center but they do tend to just smell of socks really don't they sweaty socks more than chocolate but give next time you're in one give them a little sniff see if you can smell any chocolate under the floorboards you never know you never know but that's a great question ollie thank you right now we end with we've got a question from um luana well, who's my favorite character um oh that's a tricky one i do like i mean i've got to be honest i think i do like dad I, you know dad i think i've got a lot of fondness for dad dad's the brother i never had ah uh, that's how i look at him um so i've got you know a lot of a lot of fondness for dad i think i could have a, you could have a good night out a good laugh with dad i think um but i do also like dodgy dave as well i think he was he's quite good because it's, it's always fun writing sort of maybe b bad characters you know gary was always quite fun to write but i and i like jelly and i and i you know grand's a lovely character as well isn't it so i wonder i wonder who your favorite character is there so the last one is as well from analyze okay and you ask me what is my favourite type of chocolate? Now that's a tricky one because I like all kinds of chocolate. I love a, a galaxy. Oh yes, I do like a galaxy. Very smooth bar of galaxy. But then I also like a, a nice mint aero or peppermint aero. That's very nice and light and lovely. But sometimes it's nice to have a big bar of galaxy. A big bar, well, a big bar of anything really. A big bar of dairy milk. So um, I like all kinds of of chocolate i've always got chocolate scattered around just in case i start getting hungry i wonder what your favorite bars of chocolate are well thank you very much for sending in those questions i i know you're ne very nearly finished for term now aren't you so it's very nearly your summer holidays so i hope you're going to keep on reading during the summer holidays mind have a little bit of chocolate now and again of course maybe a chocolate ice lolly if it gets warm I'm sure it even gets warm in Scotland. I used to live in Scotland, so I have a lot of fond memories of Scotland. So um, I hope you have a great summer. So thank you very much for reading Chocobot. Thank you for getting in touch with me. And keep on reading. Okay? Good luck to you all. You take care now. Bye.